Yo, so we are discussing the biofilter. So we said we have the in tank and the out tank. So we said the in tank biofilter is a biofilter that is inside the tank. And we said the out tank is a biofilter that is outside the tank. Now, the outside the tank biofilter again has two types the pressurized and the non pressurized biofilter. The pressurized and the non pressurized biofilter so remember now the question now is remember i said i was going to be explaining how to make the biofilter yourself how you can in your own house make your own biofilter how you can produce everything from scratch so that you don't have to uh buy the mechanized one or look at people that will build and you are wondering is this thing going to function or not so first we'll look at what are the properties what are the properties that you should take note of when buying the materials for your biofilter, the properties that you must take note of when you want to buy your biofilter. I'm thinking the board is not showing. Okay. Yeah, this is better. Better. So, what are the things you should take note of? One, you want biofilters, you want to buy things, or uh, how do I explain that? You want to use materials that have one. Number one, they should have a large surface area. So you want to focus on getting materials that have large surface area because the bigger the surface area, the bigger the place for the growth of your bacteria or yeah, for the growth of the bacteria such, they can convert more of your nitrites to nitrate and ammonium, ammonium to nitrites. So you need something that has large surface area too you want to get materials that are inert, which means they are pH neutral. They are not contributing anything to the nutrient or sorry, to your solution or your medium. They are inert. Three, you want to get materials that are easy to rinse. Because if at the end of the day you realize, oh, your filter is, let me give an example. It's just like your regular filter for water. You know what? The kind of filter that you prefer is the one that when the water, the filter is no longer filtering properly, you can bring it out easily and wash. The same way, you want to ensure that the kind of filter material you are using is something that you can pick easily and wash. So it's not like, oh, when you want to wash it, it takes a whole lot of stress and all. Four, you also want to ensure that your filter has enough aeration. Remember, we said we are dealing with bacteria, ammonium oxidizing, nitrite oxidizing bacteria, the key word. And bacteria, these are animals, they are living in, they need oxygen to breathe. And if the oxygen is not enough for them to breathe, they cannot do their oxidation. And if they cannot do their oxidation, it means the nitrite or nit the nitrite or ammonium that you will pump to the plant will not be used because it is not useful to the plant. And when it returns back to the fish tank, it becomes poisonous because it's either it's going to affect pH or something that at the end kills the fishes. So you also want to use materials that do not corrode. Non-corroding materials. So you don't want to use a material that after a while the material begins to rust or something, and because that would also affect the plant. Then you start having heavy metal in your plant and even probably deposit inside your animal. So another thing again that you need to take note of is knowing uh, what kind of aquaponic system am I building? Does it need a filter? Very important. What type of system am I building? So remember the types we talked about. We said there is the raft or floating system. We talked about the deep water culture system. We talked about flood and drain. And finally, we talked about the NFT system. So these are the types of um, aquaponic systems that you have. Now you realize that amongst all of these, your raft or floating system, because if you remember for the sake of also we can all call to memory what we talked about. And the raft or floating system, this is your fish pond. Then you have your sterile foam with plants growing on top of the fish pond. 
directly. So this is the rush of, so you have your water everywhere. So we say we call it floating because you realize this can float raft because you can average this per second or just like that. Then we have the other one called the deep water culture. We say remember that the difference between raft hydroponics and deep water hydroponics is the addition of an oxygenator, if you remember. So once you bring in an oxygenator, you have differentiated. So you realize the raft system and the DWC, deep water culture, may not necessarily need a filter. We not necessarily need a filter. But your flood and drain and NFT needs a biofilter. Remember the reason is, so uh, with your flood and drain, as you are building your aquaponic bed, you want to ensure there is a way to ensure what comes here uh, already in the form of nitrate. Same goes for your NFT. Also, in addition, you also realize your flood and drain, the plants here will do way better because by the time the water gets to them, they are getting nitrates that their roots can easily absorb. So, how do we build a filter? So, let's do this step by step. Let's do this step by step. Get approximately one sixth of the volume, one sixth of the volume of your fish tank. To construct your filter so uh, I'm going to try to use an example around here so this is a bin is a dust bin so what we have is you get like a bucket like this now remember when we are listing the properties we said if you look at this this is not going to corrode, meaning it's not going to start um, rusting over time. So it's not going to affect whatever I am putting inside. So what are the materials we'll be needing first? We'll get that. So I will try to do a caricature. So this is my big paint or bowl. So this is the big bowl, the first thing I got. Now the second thing I am going to need, so let's be writing out the things we are using. I've got in my bowl. Two, I will bore two holes. I will put one hole at the side, another hole at the top. Now this hole at the side, at the bottom rather, is my inlet. This is where water from the fish tank will come from. So this is water from the fish tank coming from the bottom. So one hole here, one hole on top. You can put them on the same side, it doesn't matter, but one should be at the bottom, one should be at the top. You can, some people ask, can I put two or three holes? I will explain what we determine whether you put one, two, three, or four holes at the top, but preferably one at the bottom. Then here you have your outlet. This leads to the plants. So that leads towards where you will have the plants. So usually what some people do is to send this to a mini reservoir so that they can use pressure to pump to where the plants are, depending on what works best for you. But we are concerned about the filter system. So first, we have gotten this, put hole here and hole here, created an inlet and an outlet. Now the next thing we are going to get is a crate. You can get an egg crate. You don't have access to egg crates. You can get a sterile foam, sterile foam. Let me explain what the function of this is. You want to create a barrier here. We want to try and create a sort of a barrier such that only water will flow through. So, you know, if I get crate, and I will explain why we are doing that, because I know somebody is thinking, is everything here not water? It's not water that is still going to come out here. So let me explain what we are trying to do. So you have your uh, space here. Now remember the water is coming in here. But remember we said we want the place to be aerated. And the way to aerate this place is to use, somebody remembers, air stone. So if I put my air stone here, I have to put a space for the air tubes to go or whatever, maybe create a space for them to go out and plug. Now, I want to ensure that whatever debris that is being formed does not clog my airstone. 
That is why I am creating a special compartment for my air stone. I don't know if that makes any sense. So the essence of the air stone is to have something that, um, what is the word, that oxygenates the water. And this is created so that we have a place where the water is being oxygenated. If you can, if you can, you can tell your plumber to help you build a stirrer that regularly turns the water around. If you have a stirrer, it will reduce how often you need to clean your filter system. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the next thing we are going to get, remember we are building this for the Nigeria market, get our sponge. Let me explain the kind of sponge I'm talking about. I don't know if they have a special name for it. You know this sponge that one part of the sponge looks like the part for washing pots. The other side looks like what you use, looks like foam. I don't know if you know the kind of sponge I'm talking about. But one part looks like foam. I was trying to get a sample, but I could not get before recording this. Then this side looks like what you use for washing pots, those sponge for washing pots. So fill as many as you can into this place as many just keep pouring them in here you are not pressing just keep pouring 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 as many as you can then when you are done cover so what if you don't want to cover like that another option is before you put your cover at the top let's say these are my sponges it is a different color so let's say these are my sponges they are not arranged, you are just pouring them in. So these are my sponges. So these are my sponges, like that. These are my sponges, as many as possible that can fit in. 100, 200, the more the better. So all of these are my sponges. So when you are done, get what you like a shade net or anything like a thick net or a thick cloth. You know this cloth that they use for sieving um, fufu, apu, that type of um, sieve. Well, I think they also use it for pap. Use it to cover everything down. Now, this is what you are going to realize. When the water comes in here, remember there is aeration here, your bacteria and all are going to be growing inside this place. Such that by the time the water flows through all of this and comes in here, the water living here is water containing just nitrates mainly. So you have water with nitrates coming out of the outlet, and this is what goes to the plants. I think that makes sense. So this is what goes to the plants. Okay, so I will stop here for you to understand this, and 